Hey guys, good morning. So last night I posted a video about this Renogy Smart Lithium battery and I destroyed it. For some reason, the high voltage disconnect did not work. I think I found out the culprit. Check out the DC output on this cheap charger. It is peaking at 72 volts. You guys, this is the max voltage that we're recording. And the maximum voltage that these FETs can handle is typically 60 volts. And this makes more sense to me because the FETs stayed closed even when we had a BMS failure. But there were some interesting ideas in the comment section as to how I destroyed it. But I don't think any of them added up. This makes the most sense to me. This is a cheap, crappy charger with a horrible DC output. And these voltage spikes are insane. Another observation that my viewers made is that there are only 15 resistors on the balance cables. And because there was a differential in voltage between the two packs, there's probably 15 cells. And the highest recommended charging voltage is 54 volts. And if you divide that by 15, you get 3.6 volts, which is very common upper limit voltage for each individual cell. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And I know there's a missing resistor, but it also says 15S and 16S. So there's probably a variant of this board where they add the resistor and use it for a 16S configuration. And let's count the wires of the balance leads. Let's see if one has more than the other. 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, 13. So this one has one more cell than the other one. And that's the one that we opened up. Yeah, I should have figured that out. Thank you so much for commenting that guys. Good observation. And this one's 22 volts. This one's 25 volts. Yeah, it's off by a cell. Also the conformal coating's a bit brown on this board right here, right here, and right here. But I think that was just for manufacturing. Um, it arrived like that. Maybe it was burned out when I got it, but it worked perfectly for the first test. So I don't think that that's I don't think that that's what caused it. These capacitors look great too, considering they were uh, exposed to high voltage. Something else I did is I found a failed FET. Between the source and the drain, there was zero resistance, but the resistance values between the source and the drain on all of these other FETs varied quite significantly between 60 and 200 ohms. I just read my electronics repair manual and it didn't really have a protocol for me on how to test these. And I did touch them, static discharge can destroy these, but this one was handling the current of the the entire battery. I know that because there was a dead short and it overheated the lacquer on the legs and also there's discoloration on the back when none of the other FETs had it. And going by my manuals, it seems like the thing that kills FETs most is obviously high current and high voltage. So I'm guessing it is still the charger. We didn't do any high current testing. I did 0.2C rate for discharge test. So I don't think it could have been anything else. Some people were saying there was probably kickback from this charger, which makes good sense because it has a huge coil. It's a transformer based charger. When you have a dead short across a FET and then it cannot disconnect and use its safety functionality, then of course the voltage will keep rising. We had overcharged cells and now the BMS is dead. So that's what happened is we used a crappy charger and it destroyed the BMS. The lesson is do not use cheap junky chargers. So that's what I'm thinking. If you disagree with me, please let me know below. Also, this battery performed flawlessly for the first capacity test and I had to change the settings to ensure that the self-heating pads were on before the second test. Everything was working fine. So the time of failure is when this battery was connected to that charger. In no other time, everything else worked flawlessly. And this does look like a high quality pack. It's very expensive and I don't think many people are going to buy it, especially when you can build your own battery for four to five times cheaper, or you can get a ready built battery for half the price without the heaters or communication. But it really depends on your use case. Some people will love this battery. So I'm not trying to say anything bad about it. And it is my fault that I did the tear down before the testing. Typically I do that all the time and it works flawlessly. But this time I really screwed things up by using that charger. That was 100% my fault. I knew the DC output was dirty, but I didn't know it was off by that much. Typically I do my teardowns first because I don't want to waste time. A lot of times we find the problem just by opening the battery up. And then I'm like, all right, we're not testing this. This thing's a piece of junk. But in this instance, I should have tested it first because it's a high quality expensive battery and then did the teardown second. So anyways, I need to go back to bed. I was thinking about this all night. It's super early in the morning. So yeah, I'm gonna, I need some more sleep. I will talk to you guys soon. I hope you liked the video and bye.